Kusum for everyone. Welcome to the Rex podcast. I'm your host Sonam Engden. Technology has presented a completely new evolution whereby we live in an era that surpasses our imagination every day with its limitless potential to revolutionize economy, health, communication, education among many others. Furthermore, the COVID-19 pandemic has greatly elicited the potential that technology holds for the future and made it acutely necessary for the world to embrace it or risk being left behind in bhutan his majesty has been a staunch believer in leveraging emerging technologies that hold a great deal of promise to achieve our national objectives and therefore has also been an impelling force to build and nurture a coherent environment to foster the same To discuss more on expanding possibilities with technology, we have Mr. Ujwal Deep Dahal, the director of the InnoTech department at Truck Holding and Investment. Mr. Ujwal has an electrical engineering masters from UNB Canada and technology policy management from MIT. His professional interests include efficient energy programs, smart and green cities, technology policy and planning, and system automation. Welcome to the Rex podcast and thank you very much for your time, Lisa. Thank you so much Sanam for having me and thank you Rick. Plus, if you could briefly talk about the Innotech department under DHI including STP and Drive divisions under it and its overarching mandates. Sure, thank you. The Innotech department uh, is relatively a new department uh, and it's uh, it aims in strategizing technology and innovation pathways uh, to enhance access and diffusion of uh, technologies considering the fourth industrial revolution technologies across dhi which has about uh, which has 21 companies uh, uh, under different shareholdings uh, but also aspires to be a national player in the space of technology and innovation uh, specifically looking at uh, technology and innovation from policy angle uh, as well as creating and building technology So the larger vision of the department is to develop technologies with values which become very important in the era of uh, uh, you know artificial intelligence if we may call uh, values being uh, from the ethical point of view also and uh, uh, inotech goals are uh, and targets are fulfilled by two divisions as you mentioned uh, one is the uh, drive division which is the dhi research and innovation venture excellence Uh, which is the do tank of the department where we do fundamental and applied research uh, at a humble scale at this point uh, where we are working on different technologies such as managing water uh, you know, transportation um, energy which becomes very fundamental to our survival uh, we are looking at building technologies there um, and drones and applications and uh, looking at various different applications in blockchain and machine learning Uh, the other division is the strategic technology planning division uh, which is the think tank of the division uh, which looks at the policy side of technology uh, and uh, you know it it provides the strategic direction for the drive center the research center but also aspires and works you know, works towards uh, developing uh, technology policy for dhi and supporting the government uh, largely eventually uh, from the Uh, you know science technology and innovation policy uh, in the future so basically innotech to create an impact create knowledge uh, cultivate knowledge and share knowledge uh, and build technology that's that's what is the innotech department about yes thank you so building technologies with values that is something very interesting la and given that um, ethical issues and debates about artificial intelligence and technology so if you could kindly elaborate on that so uh, especially building technologies with value and ethics plays a very important role in technology uh, as we move on and we automate our systems and i i personally look at ethics and technology from two dimensions one is uh, on the development side of system how ethical are we as a group of people who are developing some very responsible technology to be consumed by many consumers uh, the other part to look at is how how uh, you know uh, responsible are we ethically in terms of consuming the technology so i think we have to look at it from both sides uh, but uh, 
but we also need to remember that uh, you know uh, personally if you if you look at it from on history uh, ethics change over time uh, values change over time as human race uh, even uh, ethics and values uh, are different on uh, different space and time even uh, you know in different space today uh, values what is uh, in the western part of the world and values in the eastern part of the world are different so in terms of developing technology and how this will impact our lives it's very important for us to understand how ethics and values will influence technology uh, a case in point if you look at you know when dolly the sheep was uh, uh, cloned it, it it was kind of unacceptable but it happened uh, cloning of humans is an ethical question uh, rather than a technology question these days there are startup which talks about preserving human brain uh, uh, brings up huge ethical issues too uh, you know which is unimaginable but it is there on the plate and these are the difficult uh, or the challenging or the opportunities that we'll be looking at as we develop uh, our systems so uh, i mean even if you look at artificial intelligence you know artificial uh, narrow intelligence uh, general intelligence and uh, super intelligence Uh, and more and more as we develop our ai into uh, from narrow to general to super intelligence eventually uh, with all the innovation that is happening these ethical questions are going to come more and more uh, let's let's uh, let's do a thought experiment let's look uh, let's uh, let's look at an opti- let's look at an optimized autonomous cars to meet which is designed or programmed to meet uh, an objective uh, of uh, you know reaching a particular destination at a particular point in time and all these autonomous cars are talking to each other to ensure that the objective function that it is designed to meet uh, is met and what would be the situation or would these learning algorithms adhere to the human values and uh, ethics uh, as they evolve and we are, and we do know that uh, some of the deep learning algorithms uh, we are not able to understand how exactly the deep learning algorithms actually make decisions so it is very important that innovations cannot be killed but at the same time it's also very important for us to remember that uh, you know uh, the systems that we build are within the boundaries and uh, it, it does it does not go beyond the boundaries of what it is designed for but having said that innovation is important studies have shown that uh, fully autonomous cars would save about 94% to 95% of the fatal accidents so we are in a crossroad we need to develop we need to evolve uh, but we also need to develop and evolve with ethics and values uh, to to ensure uh, safety but without killing innovation yes. so while we talk about not killing innovation and as someone who is heading the stp the strategic technology planning division what is uh, your take on the need for bhutan to have a favorable science technology and innovation policy framework yes uh, frameworks and policies are very important to have a strategic direction for individuals for you know companies and as a nation uh, we know we don't have a sti science technology and innovation policy uh, i think the closest that we have is the industrial policy that we have we definitely need to have a look at that uh, but also uh, for coming from the other part uh, other side of the angle is also my honest thoughts are uh, let there be innovation and let the regulations come later if required but that statement may need to be looked at uh, rather a little more deeply uh, we know that data is the new oil and we need to develop our next generation economy on and aided by technology so it's very important that we do have a focus strategy and a platform of uh, you know uh, innovation policy but not a policy and a regulation which kills innovation again um i mean i think we have a lot to learn from the experiences of countries like israel and singapore in the recent times uh and of course sti policy for putan has to be looked and um supported from various angle and just not around science technology innovation theory perspective if you really look at it the support and platform on full cycle of academic research innovation and venture has to be looked at from the sti policy perspective and uh, lo- uh, you know let not uh, any promising idea collapse in the valley of death the so called valley of death uh, you know from academic research to uh, to bringing it out an innovation and product into the market uh, one important aspect that i do want to highlight is i think uh, 
not getting too much into nitty gritty, but I think a triple helix model of you know collaboration between uh, government, academia, and industry is very important, which is very very lacking today. Um, and most of the countries that you really see, uh, you know, the developed economies, which, the innovative economies, if I may say, uh, have a very very strong in, uh, you know academia and industry linkages. So that's one thing that our STI policy should very strongly look at. Um, of course, beyond innovation, uh, what innovators, the young industrialists, uh, if I may say, the you know, young in innovators, uh, what, what they want, I would say, or what we want is consistency in thought process uh, uh, and intent in various level of bureaucracy, I think. Uh, that's what a long-term innovation ecosystem would require. Uh, that's another point I feel uh, it's important for STI policy in Bhutan. Uh, again, my personal thoughts are, you know, uh, approve and ask questions later is kind of a tool that we should probably use, uh, especially for the disruptive technologies that we're looking at. I mean, uh, companies like Google, Facebook uh, services would not be available if data security and privacy were of only concerns then. Um, so I strongly feel that uh, let innovation flourish let things be, you know, regulations come uh, at a point when it is needed. Um, you know, same arguments on many of uh, other industries and governments led projects around the world, which has, you know, given the internet to largely the abundance of energy uh, that we talk about, all supported and fostered by STI policies. Um, it is important for us to, you know, realize that certain fundamental research should be invested by government but platforms uh, created for every individual to, you know, to technology and innovate the industry of the 21st century. Thank you. So how is DHI working towards contributing to the larger national goal of becoming a tech-driven economy in the coming years? Yeah, you know, fundamentally, uh, it is important to build a talent pipeline nationally at different levels to really support uh, a tech-driven economy it's important that a talent pipeline is created, not only uh, looking into uh, the strategic direction that the nation wants to take in a particular area of technology. So the talent pipeline, you know, managing the talent pipeline has to be looked at from uh, schools, higher secondary schools to colleges, uh, to professional levels. And we need to become, uh, have a mindset of being a lifelong learner uh, as citizens, uh, as individuals. Um, and, and we hope to manage this talent pipeline in the kind of industries we are looking into the future. Uh, and it's very important. And DHI is trying to align itself uh, towards shaping the future that we want and also helping build that uh, ecosystem of industries, but also help in building that pipeline. Uh, you know, towards this, uh, if you look at, uh, InnoTech is working on various programs, like we did the tech hack uh, last year. Uh, we are initiating programs like uh, grassroots innovation program. Uh, we're building smart city projects and drone applications and blockchain projects. Uh, DHI is also doing the national digital identity project, which is one of the uh, foundations for the uh, digital platform that we're looking at uh, on which a lot of digitization can happen um, to provide services to every citizen. Uh, and we hope to build all these projects into startups, uh, ecosystem, building products and services, not only nationally, but, uh, you know, aiming to ensure that whatever projects we do nationally is also, uh, we will be able to take it beyond the boundaries uh, and build those uh, startups internationally, eventually. Uh, one of the most important aspects I feel that we are doing at DHI is we are doing these projects uh, on co-creation basis and not as, you know, buying products off the shelf. And uh, Otherwise, we are only spending money to buy products. Of course, it serves our purpose in the you know, short term, but there is no definitely no technology transfer. So that has been a major shift that we do projects in a co-creation model. It's not the easiest path, uh, but more satisfying and uh, more you know, uh, being able to develop uh, the capacity uh, within the country uh, for, for in technology uh, and, and in building products. Uh, as an example, uh, in inspiring and capacity building, uh, I think it's very important to take science and technology outside the four walls of a room. Uh, you know, make, let, let's make uh, you know uh, research uh, cool. And if if you if you if you look at what uh, the Apollo mission did in US, it not only put the man on the moon, but it also inspired the next generation 
of of uh, you know youth to, to to take up stem to take up science to take up math- mathematics so uh, we are also conceptualizing what kind of projects uh, you know research projects we could do uh, in dhi within the country to inspire the next generation for example just for a thought you know uh, having a autonomous car built in bhutan uh, powered by solar uh, it doesn't need to be a fancy efficient car but uh, let's build together in bhutan uh, and drive it to all the schools around the country uh, and uh, talk about uh, what went in building such a project to all the youth in the schools all the children in the schools i think a program uh, you know just off the head uh, programs if we can run something like that uh, would really be inspirational uh, for taking up stem uh, the last point of course uh, dhi is also looking at uh, building fab labs uh, which will have uh, you know next generation machines which we can prototype a lot of our ideas to uh, to test our ideas before we invest in uh, large scale production in industries uh, we will have a lot of uh, you know commercial 3d printers water jet cutters advanced cnc machines we are doing the super fab lab in collaboration with uh, mit cambridge uh, and also having a lot of pipeline of students and interns and masters and phd students from mit and harvard Uh, that we can hopefully bring them uh, to the lab to you know carry forward some of the research that uh, that we are doing so these are some of the some of the works that we are doing at dhi dhi to you know uh, in the, towards a tech driven economy um, and hopefully much more as we move ahead and much more collaboration especially with rex uh, looking looking at technology leadership which is so important to actually you know to have a tech driven economy at the end thank you So as the industry 4.0 unfolds before us with a whole new level of transformative technologies what are some of the emerging technologies that have the potential to realize the royal visions and change the course of Bhutan's future like how can we leverage ai big data blockchain iot among many others to to our advantage um right so if you look at the fourth industrial revolution uh, you know as we call it these days uh, it largely takes our physical world which is physical world is largely analog i mean look at the uh, look at the sound of uh, air if, if you look at the uh, electricity flow to everything is analog actually and uh, uh, the, and then we have made all the analog into a digital world because our computers can only understand digital uh, so we have uh, sampled all the analog values to make it digital into zeros and ones Uh, but what the fourth industrial revolution largely does is also combines the biological world as we live uh, you know so it kind of combines a physical digital and the biological world so we are, that's why we are talking about amalgamation of you know uh, brain computer uh, systems and you know stuffs like that so uh, i kind of personally believe that innovation in uh, cross sectorial domains you know innovation not only in one domain but how can we innovate in cross sectorial domains how can we use engineering in health or how can we use you know medical expertise in space engineering if uh, those kind of thought process may be very important to leverage some of the technologies as we move ahead this would provide the platform for us to develop solutions for and for um, impacting a billion people plus uh, and that is also our vision that we be able to create uh, that kind of impact industries Uh, and industries with values if i may say also you know stem curriculum becomes very important uh, to realize this vision with stem uh, background and uh, learning the fourth industrial revolution technologies as the tools uh, we can apply technology cross functionally in developing solutions uh, you know to the challenges that we face now and in the future so in terms of uh, long term vision uh, i feel that it is of importance to have strategic milestones which are like as a country have a short medium and a uh, long term national strategy in building the tech based economy so building the short medium and long term industry roadmap and uh, sustaining pipeline of talent is important and importantly agility to adapt with the strategic roadmap with changing dynamics becomes very important because this is something that always changes like but uh, personally i think you know we should look at uh, iot and ai as an industry uh, if you if you look at the telecom sector you know it was voice services for telecom for a long long time since telecom existed and in the last 10 years if you really see the complete revenue of a telecom industry would be largely from data supply services but uh, how long will the data supply service uh, as a revenue stream for telecom be relevant are there other technologies which is kind of uh, disruptive to the telecom industry should we be looking at 
more than data supply service should we be looking at service with data because uh, sectors like telecom and power have a lot of data how can we leverage that data i think that's some of the areas that we should look at i think we should bet on biotech uh, bet on quantum computers and focus on scientific and technology research at fundamental you know levels and not forget that you know 21st century could be the age of magnetism and superconducting materials so i think to leverage some of these uh, new technologies we'll have to look at some of these sectors for sure how do we start our short uh, medium and long term strategy is a question that looms around just my personal thoughts you know we may need to start investing smart in our priority sectors uh, leverage on our brand value to start collaboration import talent i think that is very important uh, for us at least uh, up to a certain level so that we form a critical mass of you know, strategic uh, technology people and build the basics and fundamentals through education and talent pipeline by strategizing international partnerships with strategic nations and startups uh, have to have partnerships with universities and labs around the world so those are some of the ways i feel that we should build the next generation of industries and prepare ourselves in terms of our talent pipeline and the next next uh, economies uh, of industries so what are some of the existing and foreseeable challenges that would impede our progress over becoming a technology driven nation or to achieve the achieve the results of the recommendations that you just um, mentioned uh, true i think uh, challenges uh, i kind of see many a times the challenges as opportunities because when we see challenges then we work towards it and then suddenly we realize that it, that has become our opportunity actually and you know so uh, so when i talk about when i think about challenges uh, or opportunities uh, it's it's i think one important thing that we have to keep it in our mind is a technology leadership i think is very important uh, you know if you have to manage if you have uh, for example if you have uh, 200 coders uh, we need to have a technology leader who can manage that and and generally the ratio is 1 is to 50 uh, then we can get the best out of the uh, you know the uh, the experts uh, pool so technology leadership is important uh, and the leadership uh, technology leadership should also provide that avenue for willingness to explore and take risks uh, and that is something that is lacking i think uh, uh, in terms of uh, our appetite in taking risks uh, and and doing the new thing um so those i would say would be fulfilled largely by a technology leadership um managing the next generation of uh, you know workforce uh, is also very important and i take that as a challenge uh, for us to uh, grow our technology industry because the uh, fundamental idea about the next generation workforce are very different than what it was uh, 20 years ago so we need to m- be able to understand and work together uh, to build the next generation of industries uh, as i mentioned i think uh, university and curriculum remains a challenge that needs to be sorted out uh, to build the talent pipeline i think mo- most importantly again the mindset mindset shift in terms of uh, you know taking risks is important you know one challenge i also see when we look at curriculum is i think uh, if i have to be very specific on this front the way our engineering courses are taught uh, and uh, the way we look at mathematics uh, more as a foundation than rather than as a tool uh, i think we will have to really start looking at mathematics as a tool uh, of engineering rather than just a foundation so i think we have to reinvent how mathematics is uh, taught in engineering colleges uh, to le- really leverage the next generation of uh, fundamental technologies that we are looking at yeah those are some of the challenges but I, as i mentioned I, you know the, the challenges are the opportunities for us to actually leverage the technology space for the next generation of industries that we can build thank you talking about uh, reinventing the way we teach mathematics or any science subjects or for that matter if you could tell us about the programming lessons that you designed personally to teach the concept of uh, thinking through programming right uh, This was a program that I conducted at a personal level uh, where we had about 32 kids who participated uh, where uh, it was named as learning to learn and I used uh, you know coding uh, to teach fundamental concepts in mathematics so kids uh, I did not mention that we were learning coordinate geometry but uh, through programming through animation programming uh, kids were able to make uh, you know circles that could move a snowman that could move and fundamentally they were learning coordinate geometry in two space 2d space so uh, 
I think this is something that we can uh, we we can really research and take further uh, because it was a four month course. About thirty two kids participated. Uh, we use programming languages uh, such as JavaScript and uh, Visual Studio Code eventually, and also a bit of HTML. So, uh, aged kids aged uh, you know uh, on an average of ten years old were able to build their own website. Uh, very excited to do the course. I think there there is a lot possible in terms of making. uh mathematics and physics fun and i really want to wanted to see how we can use you know coding logic to develop logic in physics and mathematics so that was the concept but one thing we i also realized that uh, there's a you know because lockdown happened and i had to switch to zoom classes uh for that during that four months one one and a half of the month uh we lost you know about uh, 12 kids dropped out uh, and that also shows that we have a huge digital divide well within timpu so that's another ch- probably a challenge that we should be working on but overall it was an amazing experience personally uh, in the course learning to learn nice no, thank you na it sounds very interesting indeed na and this is my final question how do you foresee bhutan 10 or 20 years from now as someone who is actively engaged in working towards a tech driven economy at this critical juncture really looking uh, bhutan 10 to 20 years down the line especially in the path we have taken uh, vision by his majesty uh, in terms of a technology driven economy uh, i really hope uh, and and uh, as we work towards that everyone you know in bhutan uh, is able to pursue professional and economic opportunities of their choice uh, if after 10 years of our endeavor 20 years of our endeavor we we can reach that it would be a a very important milestone for us to have chosen this technology path so i see i i see that everybody could uh, pursue professional economic opportunities of their choice uh, with this uh, trajectory that we have taken uh with the technology and uh, especially looking at fundamental and applied research that we want to venture into nationally uh, i hope we can have abundance of uh, basic resources uh, which is energy water transportation with the use of technology of course these abundance are uh, these resources are available in nature but how we tap it and how resourcefully we and intelligently we use it will will define us in the future and i hope with this pursuit of technology driven economy that we're looking at uh, we hope to make uh, our basic resources abundant for people uh, i hope bhutanese all of us are solving the challenges of humanity beyond the boundaries i think that's important as uh, being a technologist at heart myself Uh, i wish to see and i hope to see that we bhutanese all of us are involved in cutting edge research uh, you know and as a global force in developing technology uh, so of course uh, with all this uh, we we hope to have a meaningful work work life and uh, improve our quality of life and living uh, using and developing technology with values uh, as we move ahead nas thank you very much nas With this we come to the end of the program. Thank you very much for all your insights and updates and uh, we wish you all the best for all your future projects. Thank you so much Sonam for having me on the show. It has been our pleasure. Allah. And we would also like to thank all our listeners for joining us. Please do take care. Allah.